Good afternoon and welcome to another Afternet Radio Show, broadcasting today from the beautiful Watsonville, California. Yeah, beautiful One of the first there. places I came to when I left England, Watsonville. <laughs> Love this town. It's beautiful. It's a special I, spot. Yeah, I wasn't expecting uh, how much I would enjoy living out here, but uh, right. I really... And I'm here today with Raul, Ra Ra my friend Raul here, uh, Quintero, is going to be fighting on January 25th Correct. at the Santa Cruz Civic Auditorium. And Daniel Compton, you're the promo you're promoter for the fight? The promoter, yes, the promoter, matchmaker. You're the Don King. Trying. You're the, you're the Don King. It'll be on Saturday, though. It'll be the 29th. Oh, It'll so, be January so, 29th. Okay. Yeah. He just got the hairdo on his face. The hairdo looks good. The Thank beard you. Look, the beard looks good. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I've been growing it since I was five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us how the fight came about, will you? Yeah, I'm actually really stoked that I'm, that I'm getting back into the groove. And... How, how long has it been since your last fight? Almost seven years, six and a half, right? And he's talked to you to get back in the ring. Yeah, at 40 years old. <laughs> you're, not, you're not 40 years old. <laughs> How old are you? 37. 37? 37, 38 this year. 38? Is that, that's, that's, you're on the back nine as far yeah, as but I'm, I'm You're on the back nine in his MMA, MMA career, right? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's... I think that, you know, in your 30s, you're probably hitting your prime physically. Um, I think it's... If you... Um, you in jiu-jitsu... There's a lot of young kids that are, they move quick, they move fast. Um, but, you know, I mean, with these shorter rounds and, and MMA, it's, uh, yeah, I don't think there should be an issue. So he hounded you. He did. He hounded you and hounded you and hounded you. Or did you, did you take time to think about whether this is a bit smart decision for yourself to get back in the ring? I thought maybe Danny was setting me up, you know? Right, of course. Yeah, just Let's but, see. uh, but... Regardless, you know, it's, it's forced me to get back in shape and, and uh, you know, kind of really pursue that that uh, that drive that I that I have in martial arts. Right. So you went back. Did you go back to him and go, okay, I'm in? So no, he told me that I was in. He had no he choice. Told you he had no choice. Raul had no choice. So Raul is the most popular fighter in Santa Cruz by far. And more so than Rockhold. Second, Rockhold no, is second. No, more popular than Rockhold. Okay. Rockhold moved to Florida or something. Yeah. Right, so. Right. He's the most popular fighter in Santa Cruz, and if this show is going to be successful, I need Raul Quintero on the card. Okay. So I kind of let him know that because I want to bring MMA back to Santa Cruz. I want this to be sustainable. I want us to have a continual show out here, and so I needed Raul on the card. Uh, uh, thank you, Isaiah Chapman from uh, Team Salguero, for taking the fight. He just had his 21st birthday, so he is fighting a stud. You? You're fighting a kid that's 21 years old? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. He's trying to you, stud. Trying to set me did up. you set that fight? Did you set the opponent? Did you set his opponent up, or did his opponent come to you? I had been working with their team previously. They had come on my podcast, yeah. um, the Barry Combat is? Podcast. Uh, the Barry Combat Podcast. It's a podcast for the show. We usually just interview the fighters on the show. Okay. We don't do much else besides that. Right. But um, they had come on during uh, the pandemic when there wasn't a lot of fighting going on. I like their team. Their team's pretty much down to fight anybody as long as it's you know the same weight. You got to make weight. They'll fight you. And uh, Raul, although he's still an amateur, is very talented, um, and so it's it's extremely hard to match him with an opponent. So I had to find some some opponents that were game. And so I hit up I hit up Team Salguera. I was looking for Rowdy. They have a kid named Rowdy who's really good. Um, Rowdy wasn't available, but then uh, uh, Coach Salguera he offered me up Isaiah, right. and Isaiah's a stud. I, I've sparred Isaiah, so I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to the match, man. What what put that up to? What, what weight class are you? Uh, right now, I'm I'm a little heavy, but I'm uh, fighting at 155. Which makes you which which makes you what? Lightweight. Lightweight, and obviously the other guys are lightweight too. Yeah. Uh, any concerns about him being a little bit younger than you? No, no, not necessarily. Do you have a game plan? Yeah. Which I know you're not going to reveal in this, but that was revealed to me. But I'm going to choke him out. <laughs> that's the plan. To choke I mean, him out. I believe that's the plan. Is that how your first two fights went? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys are telling me if, if I finish in the first round, though, that they, they wanted me to let me last longer. So. Oh, so yeah, because you got. Yeah, but you got. You spend what forty bucks per ticket? You Almost. Wanna get, you want to get your money's worth. Sixty bucks. Sixty bucks per ticket. <laughs> Speaking of sixty bucks per ticket, how can you get tickets for the fight? You can get tickets on SantaCruzTickets.com. It's at the Santa Cruz Civic, so uh, mm -hmm. we're using uh, their box office through the Santa Cruz Civic. So it's SantaCruzTickets.com. You can get in there. Raul, I think, still has a couple of tickets left, too, if you want to uh, contact Raul directly. Yeah, about 20, 25. 
So you can hit up Raul for tickets, or also um, any fighter that's on the card should have tickets. They get a little bit of a, a commission off of their ticket sales. We appreciate them helping sell tickets. Right. So if you buy the ticket through the fighter, it actually helps support the fighter a little bit more because it is amateur. We can't pay them, so that's a little opportunity for them to have like a little bit of uh, a little bit of money at the end right. of the fight. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm standing. This is your gym, obviously, right? Yeah. This right. beautiful gym here, Watsonville. So what have you? What have you? When did you start training for the? When did you? When did you know about the fight? Uh, obviously, when you said yes, I'll do it. When was that, and when did you start training? And how is your training different from what you do on a daily basis? Well, um, Coach Dan, I, I tra uh, traveled down to LA with him. He's a Bellator professional fighter, so uh, he took on a fight down in, in LA. So I went down with him, and I kind of saw uh, his preparation, and really inspired me to want to do something um, competitive again. So. He's like, this is the time. The time is now. Don't wait any longer. Let's make it happen. Really just kind of pushed me to... He did a good sales job on you, didn't he? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? These UFC guys, Glover Teixeira, he won the uh, the light heavyweight title. He's 42 or 43 now. Yeah. Daniel Impressive. Cormier, when he beat um, when he beat Stipe, 42 years old. So you got five more years, baby. <laughs> At least. <laughs> How many fights is that? Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Three fights. You guys fit. You got fit about fifteen more fights in you. Oh boy. Yeah. What do you think, we'll bro? One. We just started one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many more amateur fights do you see yourself having before you try to make that pro transition, or is that still an aspiration of yours, or what are you thinking about that? Um, I mean, so you know, we opened up the gym about, I think, three and a half years, almost yeah, almost three and a half years ago. And uh, I was doing uh, construction tile full time, and you know teaching um, part time, and uh, yeah, I had a lot going on. But now, as the gym's starting to grow, people starting to come back, feel more confident and comfortable with uh, with the um, the pandemic, and uh, I've been able to hire some some uh, instructors. So I'm really able to focus on myself and to be a fighter. Like you really have to be selfish. You know, you can't. Right. You can't go in here and split your time, you know, training and teaching. So, um, unfortunately, you know, I, I'm not really um, teaching my students as much while I'm preparing for the fight. But um, I do have these instructors now. I have Coach Seth. We brought in from uh, from IMS, and uh, I mean, it's been it's been such a blessing. He's amazing, amazing instructor. You have, you have about fifty kids come here. Oh, the well, I mean, it depends. Like some days, uh, there's about uh, 15 kids. Okay. Sometimes there's about 25 yeah. to 30 kids. It really all just depends on the. But day. they must have missed it during the pandemic, you know. That's a, that's a, I'm still here. I'm yeah, still here but, working with the kids, but yeah. I do have some help. So that's really uh, takes a huge weight off of my shoulder. Right. So how much, did you sell, how much did you sell tickets to the kids for? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I have a you know couple the kids, kids wanting you know to watch. You know yeah. they all want to come down and see you fight. They do. They right? do. Have your own cheering section. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm actually, you know, it's it's um, it seems like something that may not be uh, suitable for kids, but it's really, uh, you know, I mean, as far as martial arts environment, you know, um, sometimes you find like a a very rowdy group, but um, in sanctioned uh, uh, commissions like uh, Bay Area Combat and Camo. You know they really try to keep their composure and professionalism. Right, so right. Um, it's I think that it's going to be a great event. MMA for was on the way up before the pandemic, wasn't it? It was kept growing and growing and growing, right? Was it it great, was right, and it still kind of is. You know, is so yeah, because the UFC they were able to pull off those shows during COVID. They did. Um, Fight Island, okay. and so actually, like the, the I guess the following for the UFC like doubled during the pandemic. So, and, and now Jake Paul's, uh, uh, all these YouTubers that are coming up are talking a lot more to you about the UFC and MMA. So there's still, and Conor McGregor, of course, he brought a lot of money to the sport. So now there's, there's more money there. And so it's actually, it's, it's more popular than it's ever been. I'm really excited uh, uh, for this show. Your gym is contributing, um, I think, five fighters in total. So how are you balancing, you know, <clears throat> fighting yourself and also having to support, you know, Jacob Olsen, Andy Valgordo, uh, Robert B Benishan, and Justin McGinnis. These are, and, these and are kids that belong to the gym that are fighting in the car, on the same car. On the same car. They're okay. uh, uh, one MMA, uh, three jiu-jitsu competitors, all on the same night as Raul. How do you plan on balancing all that, man? Well, I mean, I got my, I got my coaches. Like, they're all lined up. I'm not going to be, unfortunately, I won't be coaching that night. Um, I'll be just getting ready for the fight. Yeah, so that's the, that's the plus of having those guys here. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got uh, Mateus Andre. 
black belt under Caesar Gracie. He's now teaching here, working with me almost full time, and uh, he's tough training around my size. He's right. a great guy to train with. Train with uh, the Diaz brothers, Kron Gracie, and uh, yeah, it's really cool to have him and, and kind of show me more about the no gi game. It's very beneficial for MMA. You have six guys actually, because you have AJ Versal as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, AJ. He didn't mean to. I just <laughs> forgot for a second, AJ. That was my bad. No, but. Um, it is an actual, uh, so you have three MMA fights and three uh, Nogi Jiu-Jitsu uh, jiu fights. Yeah, well, that's all, all because of Dan. Dan told me that uh, I had six competitors. Sounds like, Dan walked, <laughs> sounds like, it sounds like Dan walked in here one day and just roped everyone in here. It's pretty much what happened. Take him down the, and put, uh, put in the bed. No, I, gotta, the I really got to give it up to Dan. Like, um, during the pandemic, you know, Jiu-Jitsu wasn't ideal because it's so close contact. There's really no social distancing in right. Jiu-Jitsu. That defeats the purpose. Um, and so... Uh, people still wanted to train, still wanted to get in shape, so we started a kickboxing program. Dan's uh, one of the best strikers, you know, in in this area, and uh, so he basically grew up a, uh, a kickboxing program for the school, for the love of it, not for the money. He didn't charge me anything, and uh, you know, as my basically as my return, I'm I'm doing this. You know, to really help Dan, this is this is what he wants to do. I think he's found his niche, and you know, you're helping him out too. You're, so he, you're, you're, you're both helping out each other. Yeah, but I'm I'm probably getting the most help out of it because yeah, you know, yes. Yeah. Well, when this when this gym first opened, um, I was living in Reno, and Raul was just getting the gym started, so he needed he sold some lifetime memberships for uh, I can't remember what the price was. It was but, uh. Two thousand dollars. Was it two thousand yeah, dollars? Was, it was a steal for a lifetime, yeah. you know. And um, I wanted one, even though I was living in Reno. I didn't know when I was going to be back out here. Right. But I know that I want to learn from Coach Raul. He's been my coach for what, seven years now, or something, maybe even longer. I can't remember. I've known him forever now from the outdoor world days, you know. So Elementary. Yeah, it's been a long time, and um, so I called him, and I think, what did I haggle you down to on the lifetime membership? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two thousand was cheap enough. <laughs> no, I, I, think I, got I, it for, I think he got it for like five hundred. I think I got it for wow, five. Wow, you, you, you caved. But I knew that one day he, he'd be uh, he'd be teaching me, so right. uh, it was it was definitely a plus for me. How did you start this whole? How did you? What was your first steps into ring? When you, your first steps into a gym when you were a kid? Um, I uh, I trained with Master Jin over. Um, over on the yeah. on the east side, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that was pretty cool. I got I got beat up a lot in there, um, you know. Technique was like I didn't have any of that. I just had aggression, and so um, yeah, it was it was something that uh, really intrigued me. But I pulled out of it. You know, I didn't have like the resources. It was it was expensive, and and um, when I turned uh, twenty two, I was living um, close to. Uh, close to East Cliff Drive, and um, I knew there was a Jiu-Jitsu Academy over there. Yeah. And so I, I, I was watching the Ultimate Fighter show, and I was seeing these guys do Jiu-Jitsu, and I was like, yeah, I kind of want to do something like that. I don't really like getting punched too much, but um, I'd love to learn you know, some style of grappling. Yeah. So I started Jiu-Jitsu, and it was just so fascinating to me you know, what the capabilities of the body are. And, and, uh, Chris Smith was a t- he was Chris Smith was like one of the first. Right. Yeah, so you were that old when you started jujitsu? Did you wrestle in high school? I was school? 22. Yeah, I wrestled. I wrestled in uh, in freshman year before I uh, took a different route. What well, weight did you wrestle at? Uh, I wrestled at like one. I believe it was like one fifteen or sixteen. I can't remember the weight classes anymore. Was that Soko High? Yeah. Do you remember the coach? Who was the coach over there at Soko High? Um, Fishburn. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Coach Fishburn. But wrestled you- with like Mike Stratton. And uh, my brother Tony, Anthony Duran. You know, Luke Rockle came through that wrestling program as well. Yeah. 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 Mike the, Pearson. The kids who come in to, the new kids or kids that come in here, what do you see them, uh, most of the kids dealing with? Uh, gra- like you, you talked about aggression. You know, I have a lot of parents call me up about like um, that their kids are getting picked on at school and, and they're being bullied and they want to, uh, they want their kids to learn how to fight back and uh, yeah, and I tell them, you know, jujitsu is like jujitsu is a self defense. It's not a way of inflicting pain, you right. know. So I think people get the wrong idea about that. Uh, I think the biggest self defense is, is confidence. Right. You True. know, uh, if you run around, you know, with your head down low and you're really, you know, kind of like um, shy, kids are kids are mean. Yeah. And they're gonna pick on you. Um, so 
you know, and I, and I, I, I kind of felt both those sides when I was younger. Um, I, I used to, you know, pick on people and I don't know, if look at me and it's kind of funny, but, um, I had a buddy, uh, Thomas Ramos, he, he just socked me right in the face one time. And, uh, that kind of like was the, the beginning of the end of, right. of you know, right. my, my bullying right. days. So thanks. Thanks TG for I that. that with my kid. did that with my kid. He, he was, but he was getting bullied at Harbor High and I put him in Taekwondo. Aptos martial arts from Cal Kicks kick some heads off or what? He, he took, you know, just, he, he, was, he just was confident. Yeah. He never hit anybody, but he wasn't getting, yeah, bullied. he wasn't getting bullied anymore. I think that's the best approach, you yeah. know, it's, it's, you're, you're learning in, in, in jujitsu, you're naturally incorporating, uh, positive habits like, uh, confidence, uh, respect, discipline, integrity. And with all those, those units together, I mean, it's, it's a recipe for success. So. I would talk about kids. One, one more question about kids. Obesity is a big problem now with kids. You know, it's easy just for them to grab burgers and then they're sure. going to go to the food stand and get something. How do you, how do you, do you work on kids diet? I don't, I'm not, I'm not a nutritionist, you yeah. know, this is a jiu-jitsu school and I feel like, um, you know, I, we, we, when you come here, you know, we're not doing, uh, you know, jumping jacks and right. stuff. We're, we're, we're here to learn jiu-jitsu, okay. you know, and, um, but he's changed his diet though, I bet, huh? This guy did, yeah, he yeah. calls me every day, he, what? he, he, he uh, I won't tell you the names that he calls me, but, <laughs> um, yeah, he's, you know, he's definitely a huge motivation factor for me, um. But yeah, I mean, my whole team, like these guys are, these guys are coming in here strong. I mean, they're looking lean and sharp and strong. So, you know, I mean, if that's, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta fit in, yeah. you know. Uh, you can watch the fight online, we talked about, right? Yeah, so we do have a pay-per-view link. We haven't, uh, we haven't got the link out there yet, but we're okay. gonna be sharing the link for the pay-per-view soon. It's a $20 pay-per-view. So it's actually a lot cheaper than coming to attend it in person. In person, it's going to be a lot funner. But um, if you do have some, you know, uh, some uh, older people in your family, or there's some, you know, kind of scared about COVID for whatever reason, the pay per view is going to be a good okay. option. And also, you're going to be able to rewatch that pay per view uh, as many times as you want for a year. Okay. All right. So yeah, you'll, you'll have That's access to the show for a year. So I, can, I can get you can get when that link comes about, you can give it to me, and I'll put it out there. Sure. That's going to be good. So you got a full you got a full house. Of, uh, yeah, I think right now I've. I think I, I sold about ten thousand. Yeah, $10, yeah. Tickets. So. No, there's going to be a big, a big, huge group of people supporting right. uh, Coach Raul. Um, so hopefully, there's people for the other guy too, man. Because well, you're fighting in your home. You're fighting in your own, in your backyard. Yeah, I definitely right? have the advantage there. Yeah. Isaiah is coming all the way from Antioch. We appreciate Isaiah making that making that trek out here. Trust me, he wants to get out of there for five minutes. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. No, they're excited to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. That I went there for. Uh, I trained at the gym and. Uh, I try not to wear any colors, you know. I try to slide in, slide out, make it home. So you know, harder you, than Watson, you, though, huh? <laughs> you know about his opponents. You know, pretty yeah, I train with his opponent. Okay. Yeah, his opponent is tough. His opponent, Raul. So Raul's first two opponents in MMA, um, I'm not going to say that like they weren't good, but they weren't good enough to compete with Raul. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it didn't. It wasn't a fun. His fans want to see him, what he's made of. You know, they don't want to see him go in there and beat up a little kid. You know, so although Isaiah is young. Um, I feel like Isaiah is going to have uh, some of the tools necessary to, to, to make Raul have to work. But he's older. Him being 30, what? 37? 37 yeah. don't, you want it to, don't you want it to get over with early? Because the, the, longer, the longer the fight goes on, you know, the more stamina the young guy has. Sure. That's, that's just, right? Sure. But, um, I mean, you know, in, in jiu-jitsu, I'm used to having eight-minute rounds, ten-minute rounds. So... I mean, it's not like it's it's going to be, um, you know, his his on the balls on his court. Like, you know, I've, I've been there before, too, yeah, and I yeah. understand that game. You know, and the really cool thing, that what makes this card so unique is Daniel knows every fighter personally. He's trained with every fighter on the card. So it's funny because, like, everybody's, like, thinking, like, dude, this guy, he's tr he's training with my with my opponent, you know, right. and uh, he's trained with everybody. Right. Yeah, right. and uh, so so everybody feels like maybe, um, you know, there's like a a, a little uh, uh, edge for for their opponent, right, but right. no, it's like <laughs> Dan's literally trying to set this thing up as fair as possible. So I don't mean to sound naive, and I think, but for people out there who aren't used to MMA or for the first time, you talk about doing jujitsu. Is this an MMA fight with jujitsu? Is jujitsu part of MMA? 
Well, MMA. Uh, is it a jiu-jitsu fight? Just so I'm not, I know. Yeah. Playing. So th this is an MMA event, which stands for mixed martial arts. Okay. It's a combination of all arts. Yeah. Um, but uh, there will be strictly jiu-jitsu matches there as well. This is the uh, the very first um, promotion that Dan's done, and um, and so he's put together a, a total of seven jiu-jitsu matches and seven MMA matches. Good for you. Um, a lot of work. Yeah, we just say MMA because it's okay. much easier mixed than saying arts. mixed okay. martial arts. All right. But uh, yeah, it's going to be um, basically there. I mean, there's rules to it, uh, but it's like a you know. Yeah. It's a cage fight. January 29th, right? January Saturday 29th. Night? Saturday night? Saturday night. Saturday Pacific. And you got a Facebook page. Is there a Facebook page for the event? Yeah, it's a Bay Area Combat. Bay Area Combat. And you're, or they can go to your Facebook page, which is Ralph Quintero. Yep, or Facebook. Daniel Compton as well. Daniel Compton. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, it's everywhere. Uh, Instagram is uh, Jiu Jitsu Therapy. Yeah. One word. And, okay. uh, and Dan's is uh, Santo Papa. Santa Papa or Compton, something like that. My yeah. fine name's Santo. My mom's main name is Papa, so yeah. I throw all those names around. But uh, it's Santo Papa or, or, or Santo Compton. Um, yeah. But they've got the Bay Area Combat Instagram page all as right. well, so you can find Bay Area Combat on there. So we're going to come back and do, after, after you've won the fight, we're going to come back and do another interview, uh, how, you know, how the fight was, and, and, yeah. and close it up. And it is yeah. a title fight, so this will be for the Bay Area Combat lightweight title. So this is yeah. Raul's first title fight, so he'll hopefully uh, when we come back, He'll have that strap wrapped around his arm. Adam Crum, Crum Concrete, is sponsoring the title fight. Yep. So whoever wins the main Adam. event, Adam Crum from Crum Concrete, is yep. going to strap that belt around their waist. So it's going to be a fun, it's going to be a fun night, man. Is, yeah. is you're fighting as an amateur. Is the other kid, the, your opponent, is he fighting as a professional? No, uh, this is an amateur, strictly amateur, strictly fight. amateur card. Okay. We're working on uh, or Bay Area Combat's working on getting the uh, the pro um, permit so yeah. that we can have professional fights right. here in California. Right. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate thanks for your time. Thanks, yeah, for the thanks, interview. thanks for coming out here, Neil. You're welcome, buddy. Hey, thank you, man. You. Hey, thank you very much, appreciate too. You. Uh, I'm sure appreciate all your work. All right, cool. That was a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun, man.